Well, let's look at control charts themselves. How to set, how to develop the limits, the lower control limit and the upper control limit. There are basically two types of control charts that we can develop. One, or one is called variable charts, and the other is attribute charts. We talked about variables and attributes in the chapter six. So variables are measurable variables of the product or the process, like in the case of boxes of cereal, the, the amount of cereal in the boxes. Or it could be another variable, which is how much sodium is there in the, in the cereal or how much sugar is contained in the cereal. So these are all different variables that we can measure and develop control limits for those variables. And then there is attribute charts. Attribute charts will be like what is the proportion of good parts and bad parts. You look at the attribute of the entirety of the product. So we'll talk about attribute charts in a little bit. Right now we're going to talk about variable charts. And the variable charts, there are two of them, X bar chart and R chart. X bar chart tracks the changes in the central tendency, the average value. And the R chart is about the total dispersion of the values. So these are for continuous random variables. The variables are the variables take a continuous value. Okay, it's not discrete. Okay. And so so these are characteristics that can take any real value and it may be whole numbers or fractional numbers and it is a continuous random variable. And these two charts always go together. You'll never have only X bar chart and not R chart or only R chart and not X bar chart. Yeah. These two always go together. Now, Central limit theorem says regardless of what the population distribution is, underlying population distribution, if you take a sample and average the sample values and if you take the sample average and collection of sample average, if you repeat this process again and again and again, the collection of sample means will follow a normal distribution. So that's pretty much what central limit theorem is. So the mean of that sampling distribution, the distribution of sample means, will be mu, and the standard deviation of that x bar population will be sigma over square root of n. It doesn't matter which type of distribution you start out with. When you take samples and create a sampling distribution, this is the distribution for x bar, it will always have a normal distribution with x double bar at the center and sigma sub x bar, which is sigma over square root of n as the standard deviation. And 99.73% of all x bars will fall within three standard deviation of x bar. And 95.45% will fall within plus or minus two standard deviation of x bar. These two numbers have some significance because when we construct the intervals, we will either use two standard deviation interval or three standard deviation interval, depending upon which of these two percentages we want to use. Typically, 99.73% is what will be used by default unless otherwise stated. So sampling distribution has smaller variance. So th this is the population distribution if you compute sampling distribution, sampling distribution will have a smaller variance and that's the reason why we take samples and compute sample means and use that in the process control charts. So what are the steps in creating process control charts? First thing to do is to make sure that the process does not have any assignable causes. It has only natural variability. And once you've established that, then you collect random samples, so size may be 4 or 5 or 6 or whatever, but you collect repeated samples in fairly quick succession, like maybe every, so if you are talking about the cereal manufacturing process and you want to control the weight of cereal filled in the boxes, then you may want to collect samples say every half hour or so, or even every 15 minutes, collect 4 or 5 boxes, weigh them, and you have like 20 or 25 samples taken. So from each sample, you'll compute the mean and the range. And then in the second step, you compute the mean of all the means that you calculated here and the mean of the range calculated here. So now you have X double bar and R bar. 
f with these then we should be able to we will be able to develop the control charts and usually we'll use 99.73 percent level for the limits okay. if the process is not currently stable and in control then we can either use the desired mean as mu instead of x double bar to calculate the limits or you have to investigate and make sure that the process is stable so that you don't need to use the desired value but you can use the x double bar value at the center as the target value now after developing the limits then you will graph the sample means and the range on the limits prepare two graphs one graph for x bar and another graph for r bar uh, r chart x bar chart and r chart and then see whether the observations that you have graphed the x bars and the r's are consistent with process that is in control so if the starting point was that the process was in control then you take samples and then you develop your limits now you are validating that the process was indeed in control when we when we began so if the points are consistent with that then that's good okay. otherwise then you have to investigate find out what the problems are fix the problems and then repeat the process again now there are two formulas that we will use for chart for control charts for x bar the first case is when we know the value of sigma this is not usually available to us so this formula is kind of an exception you don't use this formula very often so but but if you know the value of sigma in some instances you will have the value provided by the manufacturer of the machine then you can use this formula the lower control limit this looks like a confidence interval x double bar minus z remember this is where we will use three for 99.7 percent or 94.5 percent you'll use two but if otherwise uh, unless otherwise stated you will assume 99.7 percent interval and you'll use three here so here is the 99.73 you use z of three 95.45 you use z of 2 and the different desired limits you have different z values from the normal table so here is the worked out example so you have every hour we've taken nine, uh, nine boxes and average them so each box what is the weight divide by nine you get the average and you repeat it for the second sample third sample and so on you take the sample averages and average the sample averages there are 12 of those so you get 16 ounces for x double bar so here n is 9 we will use 99.73 percent control limit so z is 3 and now we are assuming that the sigma is given or known from the manufacturer of the machine as 1 ounce so if sigma is known then you will use the formula like that z times sigma sub x bar so 16 for x double bar 3 for z 1 over square root of 9 1 is sigma n is 9 so 1 over square root of 9 so this gives you the lower and the upper limits for control charts so ucl here stands for upper control limit lcl stands for lower control limit okay so here is lower control limit upper control limit and the target x double bar and you plot them and you see that there are three points that fall outside the lower and the upper control limits and therefore we have to say that this process is not in control it is out of control so which means you have to investigate what the problem is identify the problem and fix it and repeat the process again now if sigma is unknown and this is the case in most instances okay, sigma being known is not quite common that would be rare instance this is what will happen most of the time then you don't have the sigma so you have to use r bar in its place r bar being the mean range but when you do that then you have to use a factor called a sub 2 and this a sub 2 comes from a table in your book table s 6.1 so for different sample sizes you have the factor a sub 2 so for us sample size was 9 so factor is 0.337 and you also have the factors for r chart 
which is d sub 3 and d sub 4, which would be these two numbers respectively. So let us look at the computation. So here we have super cola and we have x double bar is 12, average range is 25, and sample size is 5. So it is a different problem, it is not the serial problem. Then you plug it in for for sample size of 5, if you go back to the previous sample size of 5, a sub 2 is 0.577. Okay, so we put that and you have the lower limit and the upper limit. Our chart is computed with using this formula d sub 4 times r bar gives you the upper control limit d sub 3 times r bar gives you the lower control limit. Now, d sub 3 and d sub 4 come from the table uh, 6 point, 6s point or s 6.0. Here average range is 5.3, sample size is 5. Then you get these two factors from the table and then you multiply, you have the lower and the upper control limits. Here let us look at couple of cases where how the control chart will look like. So, if this is uh, the sample mean that slowly is shifting upwards, then you will see x bar shifting upwards like that. But the range itself remains about the same, so range chart will not give you any problem. It is the x bar chart which will reveal the problem of upward shift in the x bar value. If you have a situation like this, where the target value seems to be okay, so the x bar chart seems all right, but then slowly the range is increasing. So the range is going out of control. 